morning, we're in Tomit Perek Dalit, Mishnah Aleph. We're going to learn Mishnah Aleph, which deals with Shrikas HaKarbon Tomit and the Zrikas Hadam of the Karbon Tomit. And then tomorrow, Blinenda, we're going to take a pause. Pause in the sense that we're going to stop the Mishnah and we're going to go to the Vahashe Esar Voda and hopefully everybody will have it by tomorrow. I know there are one or two people that are going to pick it up at my home. We're going to go to the Vahashe Esar Voda and begin reading the back of the Vahashe Esar Voda, which is a review of everything we've done till now in the Seder Voda with more halachos in it. And when we complete that segment of the uh, Seder Avoda in the back of Ahashi Vesavoda, we'll come back to the Mishnah Beli Neder. And this way you'll have an order. We talked about not worrying about not keeping things in order. We're going to be able to, at this point, put things in order. What, what, what was done first in the morning, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc and not only put it in order, but learn all the halachas of how it was done. So at this point, we're at the shrita. What does that mean? That means that the Kohen who won lottery one has done the Trumas Hadeshen. They have cleaned off the top of the Mizbeach, and they have the Marocha Gedola of wood for Karbonus, the Marocha of Ketores, and they've already <clears throat> put that, put those two logs, sets of logs on fire. The Kohen, the sun has, uh, we have dawn already. The, the uh, Kohen who won the first lottery and did Truma Sadesh and threw an additional two pieces of wood on the Marocha Gidola. And now we're ready for the second lottery, the second lottery had 13 winners. The first winner, whatever, with his finger was out, 82, 76, we've learned about that, whatever it was, the winner was the Shohei. The Kohen next to him was the Zorek. The Kohen next to him was Medashin Mizbeach Apnimi. He cleaned off the inner Mizbeach of the ash from yesterday's Petores. The fourth Kohen, the one standing next to him, the fourth winner was Medashin HaMenorah, he cleaned the Menorah. Now, although that's the order of the pious, <clears throat> as we explained, the order of the pious is lottery two, winner one, you're gonna shek, winner two, you're gonna sprinkle the blood, winner three, you're gonna clean them as bare haktoris, winner four, you're going to clean the Menorah, that's the order of the winners. But the order of the Avoda begins with cleaning the Mizbeach HaPnimi, then cleaning the Menorah, and then going back to the Shechita and the Zerika. So winner number three of lottery number two, he's going to take the keys, as we learned, he's going to open the Pishpash Tzvoni, that little door, don't, don't worry, we're going to go over this at, when we go into the Vahashiv Esavoda. He's going to open the doors of the Heichal. The person, the Kohen, winner number three, is going to enter the Heichal, clean the Mizbeach HaKetores. Winner number four is going to come in to clean the menorah. We talked about how you clean the menorah. First, you clean the five westernmost sticks, stop. And then the Kohen who won the uh, Kohen winner one of lottery two, he's going to shek the carbon tomit of the morning. Winner number two of lottery two is going to sprinkle the blood of the carbon tomit of the morning. And then we're going to go back in the Heichal and the Winner number four, who cleaned five western sticks of the menorah, is now going to clean the two eastern sticks. <clears throat> and then there's going to be the Ketoris. Now, we explained last time on Thursday why the cleaning of the sticks of the menorah were done in two phases. First, the five westernmost sticks, stop, Shrita and Zerika, and then clean the next two sticks. The Gemara learns that out of a Pasuk, Baboke, Baboke, Beitibo, Es Haneros. 
when the neros get cleaned, it has to be boke boke in two separate parts of the morning. So in order to make it two separate parts of the morning, they did five, stop, shrit the zarika, they came back to do the other two. This way the menorah was cleaned in two phases or in two parts of the morning. After the menorah was finished being clean, they went to Ketoros. Now let's turn for a moment to Vahoshe Vesavoda, page 202. This is something that printed in everyone's sitter before Ms. Moshir, if you're davening Nusach Ashkenaz, or before Hodu, if you're davening Nusach Svar. It's in everyone's sitter, and it's from a Gemara in Yuma, and it's on page 202 of your Vahoshe Esvavoda. And it's going to give us an idea of the order. We're going to get a little flavor of the order. Abaye, our famous Amora Abaye, have a Masada Seder Hamarocha Mishma de Gemara. He organized for us, in, in, a, in other words, he organized for us to be able to learn it. The order of the Marocha in the morning, setting up the wood on the Mizbeah in the morning and the Avoda, how it flowed from there. And he did this in the name of the Gemara. And he's going to use the opinion of Abba Shol. Abba Shol, there's a, remember we learned last Thursday, there's a machlokes, when you break the cleaning of the five sticks of the menorah from the two sticks of the menorah, what do you do in between the cleaning of the five and the cleaning of the two? You have to do some avoda so that the cleaning is done in two phases. So there's a machlokes, what was done between the five and the two. Abba Shaul is the one who holds that between the five and the two, they shechted the carbon tumet and sprinkled the blood. So they <clears throat> cleaned the Kohen winner number four. He cleaned five, six, stopped. They shechted the carbon tumid and sprinkled the blood, and Cohen went in number four, then cleaned the other two. So the phase one and phase two of cleaning the menorah was broken by the shechita and the zarika, and that's what we're going to, going to learn now. That's what we learned last week on Thursday in the Mishnah, and uh, the Gemara is telling us that Abaye put together the order of the avoda of the carbon tumid, and he's following the opinion of Abba Shaul, who holds that the break between the five, cleaning of the five sticks of the menorah, and the two sticks of the menorah was done through the Shita and the Zerika. So, Marocha Gidola, setting up the blogs on the Marocha Gidola on top of the Mizbeah, that's the Marocha that they're going to burn the Karbonis of today on. That would be done before the second Marocha of the Ketores, the second set of logs. <clears throat> if you go to page 75 of your Vahoshe Vesvavoda, there's a picture of the Marochos. The Marocha Gidola, a large set of logs, and this is set up every morning by the Kohen who won the first lottery. And this is the new logs upon which they're going to burn the Karbonis of today. Here is the Marocha Shelkitoris, a smaller set of logs. And with this set of logs, they're going to set it afire, create coals. And these coals are going to be taken into the Heichel upon which to burn the Ketores. We learned about this. It'll be reviewed. But that's what Abai is saying now on page 202. Marocha Gidola Kodemus la Marocha Shnir Shal Ketores. Setting up the wood, the logs, on the big Marocha upon which animals were burned. Setting up those logs came before setting up the logs for the Ketores. Umarocha Shniya Shel Kitores and setting up the small set of logs for the Kitores, Kodemis Lashne Gizrayatsin. That was done before winner number one through those extra two logs. 
That's called Shnei Gizrei Eitzim, the two special logs that winner number one threw on top of the Maracha Gedola. And on page 60, let's see, page 79 of your Bahashev Es Harboda, picture 61, they're showing you the Marocha Gidola is already lit, and winner number one, who did the Truma Sadeshin, has two square pieces of wood, and he's going to throw those two square pieces of wood on the already lit Marocha Gidova. We go back to page 202. The Sidur Shnei Gizri Eitzim, and the Kohen throwing those two extra boards on the Marocha, Kodem Ladishun Mizbeach Apnimi. That comes before cleaning the, the Mizbeach for the Ketores inside the Hegel. The Dishun, now here's where we're up to. Dishun Mizbeach Apnimi, cleaning the inner Mizbeach of the Ketores. Kodemes, Kodem Lahatobas Chomesh Nevis. That comes before cleaning out five candle sticks. Vahatovas Chomesh Nevis and cleaning the five candlesticks, Kodemes Ladam Hatamid, comes before shefting the carbon tomid and sprinkling the blood. Vidam Hatamid and the Shkita of the carbon tomid and sprinkling the blood, Kodem Lahatovas Shnei Nevis, that will come before cleaning the last two candlesticks. Vahatovas Shnei Nevis and cleaning the last two candlesticks, Kodem Es Lektores, comes before Ketores. So now if you wanted to remember the order of where we're up to, there's going to be more things to do. If you wanted to remember the order, you would look at page 202 of your Pahashiva Savoda, and it would look something like this. Number one, the first lottery, the Kohen that wins the first lottery, he's going to do the Chumas Hadeshin. After the Chumas Hadeshin is done, more Kohanim are going to the top of the Mizbeach to clean off of the top, to set it up for the large logs. They're going to bring the logs there, but the winner of the first lottery will set up the Maracha Gidola, and they will bring up more logs for the first winner of the lottery to set up the Maracha for Ketores. They're going to ignite the two Marachos. The Kohen who won the first lottery is then going to put those two extra boards, the Shnei Gizri Eitzim and the Maracha Gidola. At that point, the next step in the Avoda is going to be the Dishun Mizbeach Hapnimi, clean off the Mizbeach Hapnimi from yesterday's Ketores. After that, and that would be done by winner three of lottery two, and after that, they're going to clean the menorah, five sixths of the menorah, that's winner four of lottery two. They're going to stop cleaning the menorah, winner number four. They're going to, now the winner, Lottery two, winner one, is going to shech the carbon tomid. Winner two of lottery two is going to collect the blood in the vessel. Then once that's done, the person, winner number four of lottery two, is going to finish cleaning the two sticks of the menorah. And then there's going to be the ketores, which we haven't gotten to yet, on the Mizbeach Hapnimi. See, that's the order. Marocha Gedola, Marocha Ketana, Shnei Gizri Eitzim, Dishun Mizbeach Hapnimi, Dishun, five sticks on the menorah, Shvita of the carbon, Kabola, Hailacha, Zerika, Saddam of the carbon, back to cleaning the last two candlesticks and Ketores. So our Mishnah now, Perik Dalit, Mishnah Aleph, is going to talk about the Shvita of the Korban and the Zerikas Hadam. Mishnah says, Lahoyu, in your Vahoshev Esra Voda, we're on page 16. Perik Dalit, Mishnah Aleph, page 16. 
the sheet that they're going to use for the carbon tomic, they wouldn't tie down. There's a machlokes what this means. The Rambam holds that lo hoyukosim esatle means that they didn't tie the animal at all, neither the front legs nor the back legs, not tied at all. You remember that we're learning Masech the Tamid, Masech the Midos, going back to diagram three. The Mizbeach, the ramp starts in the south, moves west, and there's the Mizbeach. I'm sorry, the Mizbeach starts south and moves north. And as it continues to move north and north and north, you can see here the Tabaot on the floor. 24 rings were on the floor. And these rings were like semicircles. They opened up and then you were able to close them and lock them into the ground. One side opened, you were able to put the head of the animal in there close it to help holding the animal down for shita. The Rambam holds, and this is the 24 rings. The Rambam holds <clears throat> that the animal wasn't tied at all, not the front legs, not the back legs. We're going to leave the Rambam aside for the moment, and we're going to learn the Mishnah as the other Rishonim learn it, Rashi, etc. They, in fact, did tie the animal and they put the animal's head in the ring. But lo hoyukosim es hatolem means they didn't tie the two front legs together and the two back legs together. They didn't tie all four legs together. Let's continue now reading the Mishnah. Elama akdin oso. They did it like an akeda, like Yitzchak. Excuse me, Yitzchak at the akeda. How was Yitzchak tied bound at the Akeda? Right hand on right leg, left hand on left leg. That's how Rashi learns. Rambam says there's no tying at all. Rashi, Rashi, Rambam says no tying at all. Rashi says they did tie front right leg to back right leg, front left leg to back left leg. That was permissible and the head was inside the tabaot, the rings. Now why couldn't, what was the big deal about how you tie the legs, the two front ones, the two back ones, all four together? One of the reasons the Gemara gives is because tying all four legs together, or the two front ones together and the two back ones together is the way Ove Avodah Zorah brought their kabonis to Avodah Zorah. So as not to duplicate or replicate anything that they do for Karbonus Vavodah Zorah, they did not tie the front legs together or the back legs together. They did it completely differently, called Akeda. Front right leg, left right leg, front, front right leg, back right leg, front left leg, back left leg. Now you have the animal's head is being held inside a ring, the tabos. The animal's legs are tied, but you still have to hold down the animal so it doesn't move around during shrita. Misha Zahu Bevarim, the other additional six winners of lottery two. There are 13 winners to lottery two. Winner one, Shohei. Winner two, Zore. Winner three, going to clean the Mizbeah Haktoris. Winner four, going to clean the Menorah. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those Kohanim are going, there are six Kohanim that are going to be in charge of bringing the Eivorim after the, the, the animal was slaughtered and cut into the necessary parts. There are six Kohanim that are going to bring the different parts of the animal to the Mizbeah. So these are six additional Kohanim who are winners of lottery two, and they're gonna be responsible for the Korban as well. They're gonna bring the animal parts to the, uh, the ramp of the Mizbeah, and then we'll learn later how from the ramp it got up to the Mizbeah. Those six Kohanim, Yishazahu Bevar, those six Kohanim who are Zoha to deal with the animal limbs, Ochsin Bo, they would hold the animal down. 
And this is how the Akeda worked. Rosho Ladoro Uponov Lamaira. I sent around what we call Tomid number eight. To understand Tomid number eight, first we have to look at and keep in mind Midos number three. Again, the Mizbeah is running south to north. There is the western side of the Mizbeah, the eastern side of the Mizbeah. Now I take Tomid diagram eight. And you can see the Mizbea is running south to north, and you can see the rings. I just want you to get an idea of where we are because we're going to be using Tomid 8 to explain the Mishnah. But as we're using Tomid 8, bear in mind me those three where we are. The southern wall, the ramp, the Mizbeach, the rings are now in the northern part of the Azorim. Okay, that's where we are. So Vakahisa This is how the Shita went. Rosho Ladorum, the front of the animal. Here Rosho doesn't mean the head, we'll learn about the head in a moment. Means the front of the animal was south. So the animal's head is going to be put into one of these rings. Let's not concentrate upon which ring. I'll show you that in a moment. The animal's head is going to be put into one of these rings. So the animal is going to face south, Doro. The back of the animal is going to be north, Tsofo. So the animal is facing the Mizbeah. Roshal Adoram, the head of the animal is facing south. Uponov Lamaira, the face of the animal is going to be turned to the west. So the animal is facing south. It's laying on its left side, and the head is turned to the west. We want the carbon to be brought. Pesach Olmoi, Lifnei Hashem. We want the carbon to the extent possibly to be brought before Hashem, Lifnei Hashem. So if we go to Midos, diagram three, we want the animal's head to be facing the Heichel, Lifnei Hashem, Kodesh Kadoshim. So the animal is going to be facing south facing the Mizbeah, the back is going to be facing north, and the head is going to be turned to the west. <clears throat> so the Mishnah now says, Hashochet, we're on page 16, and Tamid diagram, Hashev Havoda, page 16, Tamid diagram 8. Roshel Adoram, Uponav Lamaira, Hashohe. Now, where is the Kohen winner one of lottery two who's going to shek the animal? Where is he standing? Hashohe, Omed by Mizra. He's standing to the, uh, his back is to the east. Uponav Lamaira, and he's facing west. So he's standing behind the animal. You take a look at Vahashe Vesha page 108. We're not showing you directions, but the head is facing west. The front of the, this would be going this way, would be south. The back of the animal would be north. The head of the animal is facing west. The shochet, his back is to the east. His face is to the west. He's leaning over the animal with the knife. 
and he's going to shech the animal. The other Kohen, winner number two of lottery two, who is going to be macabre, collect the blood in the Mizra, the vessel, he is going to stand in front of the animal so he can collect the blood. This is not a very accurate picture. His back should not be to the west. His back would be to the south, and he would turn his head to be able to look at collecting the blood. So the animal, the back of the animal is facing north. The front of the animal is facing south. The head of the animal is facing west. The coin who's doing the shrita, his back is east and he's looking west, leaning over the animal. The makabal hadam is in front of the animal with his back towards the south and looking towards the animal to be makabal the dam. Which ring, now there are 24 rings, diagram, you can use Midos number three. We're going to leave Midos number three for the rings because there's a machlok as how the rings were set up. There are 24 rings. Um, it's six rows of four rings each, but the question is which way did it go? Six east to west or six north to south? You can see there are two different kind of pictures here. One is Tumid, eight and one is Midos three, the way they're set up. We're going to use Tumid number eight. And now we're gonna be taught about the rings. There are 24 rings. The reason that there are 24 rings is because there are 24 Mishmaros, 24 groups of Kohanim, they came every week. It took 24 weeks to round Robin until the set came back. So Mishma <clears> Reuven, <throat> they're here today. They're starting Yom Rishon. They're here for the week. Shimon's coming next week. Today is, this week is Reuven week. Reuven had a ring. One of these 24 rings were designated as Mishma Reuven ring. And Karbonus that Mishmar Reuve brought, not the carbon tomit. Okay, forget the carbon tomit for right now. That has specific rings. Karbonus that would be brought during the week, this week, which is Reuven's week, they would use the Reuven ring. If there were so many Karbonus being brought at the same time that they needed more than one ring, they'd be able to use other rings as well. But except for that kind of situation, Reuven uses the Reuven ring, Shimon uses the Shimon ring. So for example, a Yid walks into the base Hamikdash this morning and he says, I'd like to bring a carbon toda. Reuven's Mishmar is here. We've learned Reuven's Mishmar is broken into six groups, one for each day, Shabbos, everybody joined in together. So Mishmar Reuven, base of Sunday. Base off Sunday's in charge today. Yidala walks into the base. Hamikta says, I have a private carbon toy that I'd like to bring in. There's a question how they designated who would do the avoda for this private carbon. Remember, when we're talking about lotteries in the morning, for our conversation, we're talking about lotteries only for the carbon tumid. We're not, which is a public offering every morning and afternoon paid for by the Maktas HaShekel of Klal Yisrael. Private Karbanas, a Yid walks in and says, I have a Karban Chatas, another Yid says, I have a Karban Oshim, another Yid says, I have a Karban Taita, another Yid comes in and says, I have a Shlomim, etc. Those private Karbanas who in Sunday's group of Mishma Ruvain did what? As a separate conversation. When we talk about lotteries, we're talking about the carbon tomich al shachem. And it had the same effect on the carbon tomich al bayavayim, as we learned several times. There's no separate lotteries for the afternoon. Whoever won the after morning won the afternoon. So if you were the sheikh in the morning, carbon tomich al shachem, you were the sheikh in the afternoon, the carbon tomich al bayavayim. If you sprinkled the blood in the morning, carbon tomich al shachem, you sprinkled the blood in the afternoon, carbon tomich al bayavayim. 
What I just said has absolutely nothing to do with a Yidla that walks in and says, I have a private carbon toida to bring, who's going to shecht it, who's going to sprinkle the blood, how that was done with the Sunday group of Mishma Rube, separate question, no lottery at this point for us. So all the carbonists that are going to be brought today and tomorrow, throughout this week, for Mishma Ruve, they're going to use Reuven's ring. There's a designated one of 24 rings, Reuven's ring. If there's so many carbonists, you can use additional rings. Otherwise, this week's ring is Reuven's week and Reuven's ring. That's a private carbonus. The carbon tomic shal shacha and the carbon tomic shal ben habayim had specific rings. In other words, there are 24 rings there. Two of those rings, besides belonging to a specific um, mishmar, those two rings also were used for the carbon tomit of the morning every day. And the second one was used for carbon tomit shelbein habayim every single day. So for the carbon tomit, there were designated rings, and they were not the same. It was the designated ring. The same one is used every morning for the carbon tomit. The same one is used every day for the carbon tomit of the afternoon. Now, which ones were used? So first, we're going to take an introduction. Because they're, again, as we mentioned before, the way they, they tied, or according to Ram, they didn't tie the animal, they made sure not to do anything that would duplicate, replicate anything that had to do with Avodah Zorah. <clears throat> in fact, according to the Rambam in the Maran of Ruchim, one of the major thrusts of bringing Karbonus was to rid the Jewish people of the concept of Avodah Zorah. One of the greatest Yetzirahs, it was such a great Yetzirah Avodah Zorah, that the Anche Knesset Hagdola, the men of the Great Assembly, at the beginning of the second base Hamikdash, they did what they did. The Gemara describes it in Yuma and Afsamach Tesamit Beis. They did what they did and they rid us of the Yetzahara of Avodah Zorah, what we call common Avodah Zorah. We don't wake up in the morning with the Yetzahara to bow down to the moon, the sun, the tree, or a statue. We don't have that Yetzahara. And that's because the Anshik Nesagdola took care of it because they could, people couldn't deal with it anymore. It just went on and on and on and on. If for those who learn, <clears throat> uh, you learn Tanakh, especially Nevi'im, the book of Yeshua, Shoftim, Malachim, Malachim, Halav, Malachim, Beit, there's a constant problem, especially in the Northern Kingdom, constant problem with Avodah Zorah. It's because we don't, I have a feeling, an understanding of what it means to have a Yetzirah of Avodah Zorah. We don't understand what it means. The same way that sometimes we say to a person, I can't believe why you need that. Why do you need that? I can't believe that you have a Yetzirah for that. And when we look back at our ancestors and we read Malachim, Aleph, Malachim Beis, it keeps on saying that they worshiped Avodah Zorah and they worshiped this and they worshiped this and they worshiped this Avodah Zorah. We just learned in Pashas and Pinchas at the end of Bullock, Pashas Pinchas, the Baal Pa'or. Where did this crazy Yetzirah come from that someone should worship the Baal Pa'or and do disgusting things to the Baal Pa'or? We don't understand this because we're no longer subject to that Yetzirah of Avodah Zor. But one of the major thrusts of the Avodah of the Karbonas was to rid people of the idea that there's such a thing as an animal that's an Avodah Zorah. People used to worship animals, one of the major forms of Avodah Zorah. You take a sheep, you take a goat, you take a ram, whatever they took, and it becomes Avodah Zorah. So similar to what the Jews did in Mitzrayim, the Korban Pesach, on the 10th day of Nisan, they took a sheep or a goat, they tied it to their bedpost, and for four days, they watched the, the animal to make sure it didn't get a blemish. And then when the Mitzrayim asked them, what are you tying our God, the, the Mitzrayim worshiped all kinds of Avodah Zorah, including animals. 
And when the Mitzrayim would ask a Jew, what are you doing? Why are you tying my God to your bedpost? And the Jews would say, because on the 14th day of Nisan, we're going to shecht him and sprinkle his blood on our doorpost. And the Mitzrayim obviously were quite upset to hear that their Avodah Zorah was going to be slaughtered by Jewish people. And that's what we call the Nes of Shabbos HaGobo. We'll leave that for Shabbos HaGobo. <clears throat> so one of the things that Baruch Shalom wanted the Bnei Yisrael to do as before they ex- right before they exit Mitzrayim is to uproot from themselves the 210 years that they watched Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim, worshipping animals. They lived inside a culture where people worship animals. And as uh, they say in Yiddish, we as crystals here, If you live a lot amongst the Goyim long enough, certain things seep in, you begin acting like a guy a little, you begin thinking like a guy a little, and you don't even realize it. So one of the things that Rabbi Shalom did before we exit Mitzrayim is he began the process of uprooting from the Jewish, the Jewish consciousness 210 years of culture, which was to worship animals. So Rabbi Shalom said, you're gonna take this animal that's the God of Mitzrayim, you're going to shecht it. I know the Mitzrayim are gonna be upset at you, but don't worry about it, I'll take care of them. And in the meantime, in the meantime, you tie the animal to your bed. The Ramam in the Marna of Vukim says that one of the major thrusts of Karbonus in the base on Mikdash was to uproot from Jewish life, from the Jewish consciousness, which continued, was pervasive for hundreds of years, even while the base on Mikdash stood. The base on Mikdash stood, people were still worshiping of Odin Zara and Ever. So this was a process that Rav Shalom gave us to try to help us uproot Avodah Zorah in the process of bringing a carbon to Hashem. You were also doing two things. You were getting closer to Hashem and ridding yourself of the nonsense thoughts of worshiping animals. So anything that could be done in the Avodah that was dismissive of Avodah Zorah was done. One example is the way they tied the front legs the right leg, the, the front right leg, to the back right leg, front left leg, back left leg, according to Rashi. They did this because that was not the way it was done for Avodah Zorah. The other thing that people worshipped were the sun and the moon. So when there was a Shritas carbon Tumit, we're talking again now only about carbon Tumit. We're not talking about the private Yidin who brought the carbon Tayyidin or Shlomim or a private Ayla or Chatas or Nazir. We're not talking about the private Kabbalists. We are only talking about, unless I say otherwise, this is called Masech the Tumit. We're talking about the daily morning offering and the daily afternoon offering. The other type of Odazara that was prevalent was worshiping the sun and the moon. Therefore, when the carbon tumid was brought in the morning, they used a ring that was on the floor of the Azara to hold down the animal. The sun rises in the east. So the ring that they would use to shech the carbon tumid in the morning would be a ring that was on the western side of the rings to show that they're not shechting the carbon to the east. We have nothing to do with the sun. This is not sun worship. In the afternoon, when the carbon tumid was being brought and it was towards sunset, the sun is now in the west, they would then use a ring that was on the east of the set of rings to show that they are bringing the carbon to the Rabbanu Shalom and not to the sun that's in the west. So in the morning when the sun is in the east, they use a western ring showing that we've got nothing to do with, this is not a carbon to sunrise. And towards sunset, later in the day, when the sun is in the west, they would use an eastern ring to show that this has nothing to do with worshiping the sun that's now in the west. And that's what the Mishnah is now going to describe to us. Again, there are 24 rings on the floor of the Azara. Diagram, we're going to use Tamid, diagram eight. There are 24 rings. four rows, and each row has six rings. 
Some people will say there are six rows and each row has four rings. However you want to look at it, we're looking at it from uh, south to north and there are 24 rings. South, north. So if we go to Midos number three, we see the same thing. South, Ram, Mizbeah, rings north. East, west. So now, if the, this is the east and the sun is coming up here, we don't want to slaughter an animal towards the east. We don't want to use anything to the east. We're going to use a ring that's towards the west. In the afternoon, when the sun is going to be towards the west, we're going to use a ring that's towards the east. And this is what the Mishnah is going to describe to us. And first, let's read the Mishnah, and then we'll see it on the picture. The picture that I sent out was quote-unquote clean. It had no markings on it, and we will go through the markings. So the Mishnah now says, Shal Shachar, the carbon tarmic shal shacha hoya nishcha was shechted al keren svonis ma'arovis al tabashnia. We have to look at the northwest corner of the Mizbeah. West. This is the morning. So we're going to be focusing on the west. Go to the northwest corner of the Mizbeah. Ring number two. North, south, north. Now you have marked ring number two. It's nicely numbered. Ring number two, which is row aleph, ring two. That ring. is west and we're going to use the second ring for a reason i'll tell you in a moment but we're gonna these would be the eastern rings and the this is the western ring so you have for the morning this is the only way i can do it is through the number for the morning you're going to use ring number two that's your shachar, your morning ring. Every morning, this ring number two is the ring for the carbatomid shell shachar. And it is northwest. That's what the Mishnah says. Tzvonis Marovis. Northwest. The Mizbeach is on the, <clears throat> the Tabot. The rings are in the north. South, Ram, Mizbeah, moving to the north. The rings are in the north. Which ring am I going to use? The second one to the west. Why don't I use the first one? The one that's marked uh, A, let's call it Aleph 1. Why don't I use Aleph 1? Because the, the Shochi can't see clearly at that early morning where the Shech. The Mizbeah, remember, is 10 Amos high. And the, the Mizbeach itself is in an open area, Midos 3. This area here has no roof. The Ezra's Noshim has no roof. The Azora has no roof, except the Ulam and the Heichel. The structure in the Azora has a roof. But the other parts of the Azora have no roof. So this Mizbeach is under the sky. And there were all kinds of nisim about the wind not blowing the smoke and the wind not and the rain not extinguishing the fire, etc. But this is open area. This is the east. The sun is coming up. It is shining down. The Mizbeah is 10 Amos high. That Mizbeah is still blocking that that early time in the morning, it's blocking some of the sunshine. So therefore, instead of using the first ring, they use the second ring, which 
based upon how you stood in the base Hamikdash, they got a little more light from the sun, and that helped the Shochet to see shechting the animal. So therefore, going to Tomid number eight, the ring that they used every morning to shech the Korban Tomid Shoshacha is Aleph two. Now you can have Bays two, Gimel two, Aleph two, is the ring every morning for the Korban Tomit Shal Shacha. It is to the west, so it's away from the sun, but it's ring number two, which got more sunlight than ring number one. Shal Bein Arbayim. Now the Korban Tomit Shal Bein Arbayim, Hayanishkat Al Keret, Mizrach is the finest. The sun in the afternoon is in the west, and now we want to find the ring on the opposite side, the east. So no one thinks that we're slaughtering anything to the sun in the west. So we move now to the east, northeast. The rings are in the north. So now we're moving to northeast. So the Bain Harbayim is Ro Dalid 2. That's the circle there, Dalid 2. You're now on the eastern side, second row. So in the morning, you're going to use ring right there, ring Aleph 2, which is in the west against the sun. And in the afternoon, you're going to use Dalid 2, which is in the east against the sun. Shochet HaShochet, the Shochet shechted the animal, the Kibel, he was winner number one of lottery two, the Kibel HaMakabel, winner number two of lottery two is going to collect the dam in the vessel. Collecting dam in the vessel means as soon as the Shochet severs the arteries, the blood is going to come out right into the kli. You don't want the blood going on the floor and then being spooned into the Mizrach. The Mizrach is the name of the vessel. You don't want that to happen. That causes all kinds of problems. After the arteries, the two tubes are severed, the blood will spray out right into the Mizrach. Now, the blood has to be poured on the Mizbeach. How do we get the blood to the Mizbeach? In that Mizrach. So if we go, Vahashe Pavoda, page one fourteen. Pictures 124 and 124a, you see what a Mizrach looks like. It has a bowl that can't stand because it comes to a point at the bottom. And that was done specifically so no one can put down the vessel with blood. If you put down the vessel with blood, the blood would congeal. So to make sure you can't just put it on the floor and come back to it, you couldn't put it on the floor. The bottom of it came to a point, it couldn't stand. Attached to it was a handle, and this is how Zerika Saddam was done. What the Mishnah is now going to explain to us Zerika Saddam. If you turn back to page 110, 121, picture 121, you see the Shita and the Mizrach is right at the neck of the animal, so when the tubes are severed, the blood will spray right into the Mizrach. When the dam is in the Mizrach, the Kohen is now going to take, that's called Kabbalah's Hadam. Then the Kohen has to walk that Mizrach to the Mizbeah, that's called Holachas Hadam. Then that Kohen has to sprinkle the blood, and that's called Tzarekistam. Every carbon has four parts to it. Shrita, Kabbalah, Holacha, Zerika. Shrita, shechting the animal. Kabbalah, collecting the blood in the vessel, in the Mizrach. Holacha, walking the Mizrach to the Mizbeah. Zerika, sprinkling the blood on the Mizbeah. Every carbon has those four things. 
Except for Shrita, everything has to be done by a Kohen. If a person walks into the base Hamikdash and says, I'd like to bring my carbon toda and I'd like to shecht it myself, he's permitted to shecht it himself, even if he's a Levi or a Yisrael. However, a Kohen has to collect the blood, has to walk the blood to the Mizbech, and has to sprinkle the blood on the Mizbech. Of course, if Yidla Ruven comes in and shechts his animal and doesn't know what he's doing, so the behemoth becomes treif, he has to go out and buy a new animal. That's his problem. But if a Yid knows Shrita and he's a Shaykhid, he can walk in, even if he's a Levi Yisrael, and say, I'm doing the Shrita myself. I need a Kohen that's going to collect the blood, walk the blood to the Mizbech, and sprinkle the blood. That's fine. Shrita is kosher by a non Kohen. Kabbalah, Holoch, and Zerika are only kosher by a Kohen. Now, what are we going to do with the blood? The carbon tomit, like many carbonists, the Zerika Saddam is called Shtayim Shehem Arba. You sprinkle the blood only twice on the Mizbeah at the corners. We'll see what corners. You sprinkle them on the corners and you sprinkle in a way that it hits two sides. So we're gonna end up with blood on all four corners of the Mizbeah, but we're gonna only sprinkle the blood twice. You're gonna sprinkle the blood in such a way that it splashes to two sides. At the opposite side of the Mizbeah, you're gonna splash the blood so it goes to two sides. So you only do two splashes, but the blood ends up on four walls. Okay, so we're gonna read that in the Mishnah in a moment. We take a look again at page 114, picture 124. You can see what the Kohen is doing. No, it, uh, the carbon tomit could also be, can also be slaughtered by a non Kohen, but generally speaking, because of the earliness of the day and the time and the, and the need uh, to be there very, very early, generally speaking, if not almost all the time, a Kohen would be the shohet of the carbon tomit, and he was part of the lottery system. There are those that hold that the carbon tomit was also only a Kohen. There are those that hold that Tomit can also be shafted by a non coin. So if we look at page 124, that's what Zerika Saddam, not, this is the special Zerika Saddam called Shtayim Shehem Arba. I'm only going to splash the blood twice and I'm going to hit four places. So when you splash the blood on this corner, some of it is on the right, some of it is on the left. You're gonna to go to the opposite corner, splash it again. It's gonna to go to the right and to the left. So you're going to splash twice and end up on four sides. So now the Mishnah tells you what sides of the Mizbeach to do the two splashes on. Balola Karen Mizrachis Tsefonis. We'll take this walk in a moment on the picture. The Kohen then came to the northeast corner of the Mizbeach. So he's at the northeast corner and he's gonna splash the blood. What two sides of the Mizbech is he gonna get? He's at the northeast corner. He's gonna get the north and the east. The no same Mizrach at Tzafona. And he's going to pour blood on the eastern side of the Mizbech and the northern side of the Mizbech. Then he's gonna take a little walk and go to the opposite. Right now he was northeast. He's gonna take a walk and get to Maravis to Romus, south, west so he started northeast and then he's going to walk to southwest and in both of these corners he's going to sprinkle on each side two splashes one splash northeast one splash southwest and all, all four sides of the Mizbeah have blood the no same my rubber the roma and the blood is put on the western side and on the southern side. Shiori Adam, there was leftover blood in the vessel. He just gave a splash on each corner. There's leftover blood now in the vessel. What does he do with the leftover blood? He would pour it into the southern corner of the Mizbeh, which we learned about. So let's see what that means. We go back to Tomid number eight. The animal in the morning was Aleph 2. 
So this is where the shochet is. He's at Aleph. You know, my finger in the right place. He's at Aleph 2. The animal has been shafted. The blood has been collected. The Kohen is now going to go to Mizrachis Tsephonis. He's going to walk literally the whole length here, the whole width or length of the Mizbeah. He's going to get to this corner, sprinkle twice. He's then going to walk back to where he started, walk across this way and get to the second corner and sprint, splash with two sides here. So he's going to be here and splash. Some of the blood will be here. Some of the blood will be here. He's going to go back. He's going to splash one more time. It'll end up on this wall and on this wall. The result of that is there's blood on this wall, there's blood on this wall, there's blood on this wall, there's blood on this wall. All four sides, all four walls in this bath have blood on it through only two splashes. That's called Shtayim Shehem Arba. Two splashes that end up on all four sides of the Mizbeah. The first side he went to was Mizrachis Tsephonis, northeast. One splash. And then he walked to southwest, second splash. Now, he has blood left over in the Mizra. Where is he right now? He's southwest. I'm going now back to diagram 22 of Masech Demidos. We learned that the Mizbeach was built in such a way that there were there was a yesod, there was a foundation on only two sides of the Mizbeach. Two sides of the Mizbeach did not have complete um, foundations. You remember, we learned that part of the Azora belonged to Yehuda. Most of the Azora belonged to Binyamin. You couldn't sprinkle blood um, in any part of the Azora that belonged to Yehuda. We learned that out of a posse. Blood must be sprinkled only in the part of the Azora that belonged to Binyamin. Therefore, we looked at a diagram when we learned Mesech the Midos. It showed us that part of the Mizbeah sat on Yehuda territory. That part of the Mizbeah that sat on Yehuda territory could not have blood sprinkled on it. So to make sure blood wasn't sprinkled there, they didn't put a foundation there so that blood couldn't be sprinkled on that side of the Mizbeah. The sides that of the Mizbeah that were built in Binyamin territory did have foundations because blood can be sprinkled there. At the corner of the Mizbeah, Masech the Midos, Diagram 22, Maharavis Deromis, southwest, there was a small little foundation. On the southern side of the Mizbeah, there was really no foundation. It was just this little piece jutting out. The Mishnah here says, Shiyari Hadam, the leftover dam that was in the Mizra, after he did the two splashes on the four corners, there's still blood in the Mizra, HaYeshofer al Yesod He would pour it on the foundation that's in the south. That's Midos 22. It's showing you Yesod There was a little hole in the Yesod Right next to it, there was a hole that was in the Yesod Maravi. We're not talking about the hole on the western side. We're talking about on the hole that's on this little tiny foundation on the southern side. Whatever blood was left of the carbon tumult after the two splashes, he poured into the southern hole of the foundation. Where did that blood go? We learned about that in the Sechta Midos. It ran into the foundation from outside the foundation, and there was a little waterway that was in the Azara, 
the blood went into that waterway, it left the Beis Hamikdash, and farmers were able to buy that water from the treasurer of the Beis Hamikdash. Water mixed with blood was good for fertilizer, but you couldn't just take it. The Shaila of Hektish, maybe. We learned about a Masech the Mito, so you had to pay the Gizpa to get this water blood mixture to fertilize your um, land. So that's what the Mishnah means. Shiori Adam, the leftover blood, Hayashoifet al Yisoy, the Raimus, you would pour into that southern hole on the southern piece of the foundation. If you go to Yvahashev Es Avoda, by the way, we're going to be going through this in order. I'm just using the pictures as we go through them. But as I said, tomorrow we're going to take a little pause and actually start going through this in order and fully appreciate the Avodah. Page 114, describing one picture, 124a is describing exactly what I just said. Southwestern corner of the Mizbeah has a little foundation. This is the western side of the Mizbeah. The foundation is complete. This is the southern side of the Mizbeah. There's just a little piece of foundation jutting into the south. The southern side of the Mizbeah did not have a foundation because this side of the Mizbeah right there was Yehuda territory, meaning no blood is to be sprinkled there. If no blood is to be sprinkled there, there's no foundation there. There was a little piece that was Binyamin territory, which did jut a bit into the south. That's where the leftover blood was poured from the Mizrak into that hole in the foundation on the south. So that's our mission for today. The Shritas Korban Tomit in the morning, the Shritas Korban Tomit in the afternoon. They use the same ring every morning for the Korban Tomit Shal Shachar which would be a Western ring, Western ring number two, to make sure that nobody would think we're bringing a carbon towards the sun. In the afternoon, when the, sun, when the sun is in the west, they would use a ring that's on the northeast, so no one think we're bringing a carbon to the sun that's on the west. After the Shritas HaKarbon, there was the Kabbalah's Hadam, which is winner number two of lottery two. He would take the dam, bring it to the Mizbeach, sprinkle it in the two corners, two splashes. One splash would be on the northeastern corner and it would go north and east. So he covered two sides with one splash. The second splash would be the opposite corner, southwest it would cover the southern wall and the western walls. Now, all four walls of the Mizbeach had carbon tumid blood on it through only two splashes. Any dam that was left over in the Mizra got poured in that little hole on the little piece of southern foundation of the Mizbeach. And that's the Shrita and the Zrika Saddam of our carbon tumid. Same thing would be done in the afternoon, except a different ring was used in the afternoon. Eastern ring in the afternoon, western ring in the morning, 24 rings. Each ring is for a mishmar, and those rings are for each mishmar to be able to shecht private carbonos. The public carbonos, the carbon tamid, has a designated ring every single day in the morning, the same western ring, and every single afternoon, the same Eastern ring. Okay. Blin Eder tomorrow, hopefully everybody will have their Vahashev Es Avoda. We're going to begin going through the Avoda as we've learned it so far in Masech the Tamit. The beauty of what Vahashev Es Avoda did is besides putting the pictures right next to the Avoda, they give you the halachas, more, the, more than just the Mishnah telling us the description of the avoda. they actually tell you how the avoda is done in great detail. 
before Avoda is done, a Kohen would make a bracha. What bracha did he make? So they're going to give you absolute details of how the carbon is shechted, what bracha is made, Zerika Saddam, if a bracha is made, etc. So we go through step by step. And right now where we're up to is we've done the first lottery, the second lottery of the Shechita, the Zerika, cleaning the inner Mizbech of the Torah, cleaning the menorah, and we stopped. And now we're going to go through the Avoda, and then when we go through the Avoda, through the Hashem's Avoda, we're going to continue the Mesechta with the second part of the Avoda in the Beis Hamikdash, and then Be'et Hashem do the Hashem's Avoda and get a complete orderly picture of how things were done in the Beis Hamikdash for the Korban Tomit Shoshacha and the Korban Tomit Shobain Farbai.